Welcome back. Okay, today we're gonna to be changing the oil in my 1968 Triumph Trophy. Now, the same is gonna to apply to a 1963 up into 70. If you have an oil in frame bike, I can go over that with you as well, so you won't need to find another video. That way you can stay with us. Plus you're probably pooping anyway and you don't have time to start going through a bunch of stuff. You know, time's limited, I understand. You gotta wipe your butt and move on. So, also, if your bike is a pre-unit or unit construction, process is also very similar. So I'll go over all those details with you as I'm going through each stage, but uh, we're gonna be working on my 650 today. I'll show you underneath the bike exactly where the bolts are. I'll show you the oil tank, how to drain that. If you have an oil in frame bike, that's gonna be very simple because you're gonna have a bolt up here and just one bolt on the bottom. And I'll go over with you that in detail. I'll also go over with you what type of oil to use. Also, what type of oil to use if your bike is brand new, such as uh, a rebuilt motor, I shouldn't say brand new, a rebuilt motor. And uh, if your bike has over 500 miles on it, the type of oil you should use after that. If you haven't done so, subscribe to my channel. I need your money. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They pay like 70 cents for this stuff. But hang tight, we're gonna get started. So now we're gonna work our way down to the oil tank. That is the first thing we're gonna be working on. We're gonna to want to remove the oil from the oil tank first. Now, this is clearly an aftermarket oil tank. You may have a stock oil tank, or as we discussed earlier, if you have an oil and frame tank, which means your oil and frame is 71 and after, sliding over the concrete, forgive me, and that means the oil cap would have been up here and the oil would have actually gone into the frame here and then into the motor. So if you have an oil and frame bike, you can just hang tight. We're gonna work on this part first and then we'll get to the second part. So for those who have an oil tank, your oil tank, whether it be an aftermarket or stock, is gonna have a feed line, return line, a breather line, and a removal. Now, as you noticed, I don't have a breather line on mine. That is gonna change, and if you don't have one either, I highly recommend putting an aftermarket breather on it because of the amount of pressure. So the first thing I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and remove this bolt. Now, if your tank is stock, it's gonna be a little bit different, but the same process is gonna apply. Step two, if you've finished draining your oil, go ahead and put your cap back on, like I've done here. Next, what you're gonna do is remove this bolt here. That is the bolt to your feed line. And what you're gonna find is a filter attached to that, a long filter attached to that. You're gonna to wanna to remove that, not the filter, but the bolt, and clean that filter off with carb cleaner, parts cleaner, some sort of cleaner to get that nice and clean before you put that back in. If it's in really bad shape, I'd highly recommend replacing it, especially if it has holes or anything like that. The filters are also a great place to see if you have any, you know, metal particles or any wear in the motor that's going to give you kind of an indication that, you know, a rebuild is coming in soon. I'm going to go ahead and flip the bike over on its side and show you the next bolt we're going to be removing to get the oil out of the engine. Okay, step three, if you're counting, is the big bolt here. Now, on a unit construction motor, such as mine, which will be 63 to 70, um, you're gonna find this bolt right here. It's the biggest bolt underneath there. It's not the plunger, it's not the um, transmission bolt, and it's not the crankcase bolt. It's the oil bolt. And uh, it's actually called something else. But it's for removing what oil is left inside the motor and any gunk or anything like that inside there. That too will also have a filter. And that too needs to be cleaned, which I'll show you in just a second. Now, if you have an oil and frame bike, you're gonna remove the oil cap from the top of the frame. And this won't be a bolt, this can be a metal plate with four bolts in it. You're gonna remove those four bolts, it's gonna have a flat filter, and the oil, all the oil is gonna drain from there. Same for your pre-unit construction, where your engine and transmissions are separate. It's gonna have a plate, filter in the plate and you're gonna that's how you're gonna remove the oil that's left in the motor such as the unit construction so let's get that bolt out and we'll go from there now here 
is what that filter looks like. It's very similar to the bolt filter mechanism, obviously a lot skinnier than you would have saw in the oil tank. You want to clean that off real good, check it for debris, like I've done here. And uh, this one actually looks uh, really good, i got to give that one some credit. Um, when your bike is draining, it has to be as level as possible. And make sure you leave the cap off the top of your oil tank so that can clear out. So give that a good 10 or 15 minutes, just in case anything's stuck down in the bottom. Uh, to drain out and then go ahead and put this back in. Now, sometimes these brass fit, um, washers can be a little damaged. If they are, you definitely want to replace them because there is a lot of pressure on this part of the motor and these are one of the ones that seem to leak second to most. I'm going to show you. We have one more bolt left to be removed. And we're going to go to that next. Step four is going to be the oil pressure release valve. And you can see it on my motor here. It's kind of like a double bolt, but it has a screen behind it. And that is going to need to be removed. Let me try to take a good video here of this bad boy here. Um, you're gonna wanna remove that, clean that screen properly, and put that back on. Now when you're putting that back on, you're gonna wanna make sure you tighten that very well there is a lot of pressure that comes on that bolt and it is a very common place to find leaks on these motorcycles. After you clean that, let's get to the oil. Step five and the final step, putting the oil in the motor. Now, if your motor has just been rebuilt, what you're going to use is a non-detergent 30 weight lubricating oil. And that oil is what's going to be recommended while breaking into your motor, especially on an older Triumph. As for other motorcycles, you know, that's not this video. After the 500 miles, you're going to go ahead and remove that oil. And you're going to replace that oil with a 20W50, a 1540, or 10W40. The difference between those oils, and I know the most recommended one, is the 20W50. But the difference between those oils is going to be the climate conditions of where you live, how hot or how cold it is. And that's important. Again, like I said, most people stick with the 20W50. That's what I'm going to be using on this. It's not a car oil. 20W50 motorcycle oil, and most of them are going to be a full synthetic. You can find that at any parts store. I picked up mine from AutoZone. So let's go ahead and get that oil in. We'll go from there. little tip for some of you. Some of you may have an aftermarket tank like I have here that does not have a dip stick in it. And if you're looking online, you probably notice that a lot of the places are giving your measurements in liters and so on and so forth. What it roughly comes out to be is three quarts of oil. The aftermarket tanks are designed to have the same capacity as the stock tanks would have. Most of them have been. If they haven't, you don't want that tank anyway. But it roughly comes out to about three quarts of oil. And you don't want to do more than that because inside of that oil tank, when you have your feed line, next to that was your return line. The return line has a large rod going up in it. And the oil has to be below that rod length so that way that return can come back in. And so it pushes the oil back in and the rest of the oil goes back out. So it's very important that you don't overfill your tank. So it comes out to about three quarts of oil. If you have an aftermarket oil filter, it comes out to about three and a half quarts. Again, check it while you're doing it, but if you have one of these tanks and you're not sure what to use, three quarts is going to be your safe bet. If you have an aftermarket filter, which is a different filter housing, not a filter in the tank, you're going to use three and a half. That, my friends, is how you change the oil in your classic Triumph motorcycle. You can thank me later by subscribing to this channel. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe.